Hello and welcome everyone to our June info session. These sessions are under are under the Measures Management System contract led by Patel. My name is Kate Buchanan and I assist the outreach and education efforts on this uh, project. Today's session is on Meaningful Measures 2.0 and the Cascade of Measures. Move on to the next slide. So these info sessions are part of an ongoing effort to engage measure developers and other stakeholders in quality measurement topics. Among the stakeholder engagement activities we conduct under MMS are the biannual public webinars on high priority CMS topics. At the end of this presentation, you will hear a little bit about our pu August public webinar on the digital quality measurement strategy roadmap. Before we jump in today's topic, I do want to cover a few housekeeping items. First, today's session is being recorded. Second, all participants will be muted during the call. You can enter questions in the Q&A feature. We will have an opportunity for Q&A at the end of the call, but encourage you to submit questions throughout the presentation. If you are having difficulty seeing your Q&A function, if you go to the bottom right of your screen, there are three dots. If you click on there and then click Q&A, that's where you'll see the questions. We will be putting resources in the chat box. So actually you should be able to see here, we have a link to the slides on the MMS Hub. And then finally, the recording of the this meeting will be on the MMS Hub website. And we will have a video on the YouTube page coming shortly after the meeting. So I will now turn it over to my colleague, Kim Rollins from CMS to start us off. And Kim. Thank you so much. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Okay, great. Thank you everyone for taking the time and joining us today um, as we present on the Meaningful Measures 2.0, as well as how that intersects with the Cascade of Measures. Um, the Cascade of Measures may or may not be used, um, uh, may or may not be known to everyone, so we're going to kind of review what it is, how is it used, et cetera, walk through some case studies, do a walkthrough of the tool itself, and then, of course, we'll have plenty of time at the end for a bunch of questions. Um, so with that, next slide. All right, so what is the cascade of measures? Um, so the cascade of measures is really a tool. Um, you can think of it as kind of a taxonomy. Um, for really prioritizing measures um, and supporting a lot of our different um, kind of strategic initiatives around alignment as well as the reduction of measures. It's a framework or a tool that lets us look at the measures in a different way so that we can better see where we may have um, room for alignment in one particular area. So um, if we have an area that has 20 measures, under one um, objective or under one goal, then that's gonna signal to us like, hey, maybe we can align some measures in this area and try and reduce that down from 20 to five. Um, so it gives us that kind of opportunity. On the other hand, it also gives us the opportunity to look at areas where we don't have any measures, or maybe we just have one measure and where we really need to be able to fill those gaps with new measures. And so by having programs really look at their measure sets and map them to this framework or this tool, it really helps programs kind of move forward um, in meeting the various goals and objectives that we have under really large quality domains um, and kind of see how maybe we can start to get to larger measures, whether that's composites, whether that's outcome measures, what we previously had, um, process measures or intermediate outcome measures, and really kind of move, um, you'll, this will make a little bit more sense when you actually see the diagram, um, but kind of move to the left. So we're starting to measure larger areas of focus, larger quality topics. Next slide. And so the cascade of measures was really kind of born out of meaningful measures. 
Um, and it starts with our eight healthcare priorities of that are under the Meaningful Measures 2.0 framework. Hopefully you're very familiar with this kind of house structure. Um, and so we re we've received a lot of questions of, you know, well, when you safety is a really big area. When we talk about safety, what exactly is it that that CMS means? What do we mean when we say safety or chronic conditions or seamless care coordination? And so um, when we were developing Meaningful Measures 1.0, we kind of, we, we, Folks asked us that question, and so we went to our measure set and we said, okay, well, these, you know, 50 measures go under safety. This is what we mean by safety. And when we developed the cascade of measures, we really flipped that discussion and we said, okay, safety, what's important when we're measuring safety? What are those quality topics? What are those objectives, those goals when we're thinking about safety that really need to be measured? And so I'm sure that Meredith will touch on this a little bit further um, when she starts to present, but we asked that kind of more um, theoretical or academic question to say what's important when we're talking about safety, and then we mapped our measures to it. And so it gave us a different conversation because, like I said in the previous slide, not only are we then able to identify um, alignment, areas of alignment and reduction, but because we thought about what safety meant first and then mapped our measures to safety, it also gives us an amazing opportunity to figure out, well, what areas of safety did we think were important that we don't have any measures for? Um, and so, like I said, it really kind of flipped that discussion. And so I think with that, um, I'm going to, we're going to go to the next slide. I'm going to turn it over to Meredith to get into some of the details. Thanks so much, Kim. And thanks everyone for joining. So this diagram on the left will be helpful um, as you think about Kim's earlier comment about shifting to the to the left. Um, so we have in the diagram on the left side of the screen, the healthcare priority in that dark blue circle. Um, that is the Meaningful Measures 2.0 uh, starting point. And then associated with each healthcare priority, we have goals. Um, the number of goals varies by healthcare priority. So um, in this sort of schematic, we have three different goals associated with that healthcare priority. For each goal, there are multiple objectives. Um, and so um, for this example, we've given each, each goal two objectives. And then each objective is associated with measurable um, measure standards, um, which is what we're calling them in the CMS measures inventory tool, sort of those individual level measures um, that, that contribute to um, quality. So as Kim mentioned, we sort of look to the literature. We look to the gray literature. We look to the peer reviewed literature to identify what are the building blocks of quality? What are the goals associated with each Meaningful Measures 2.0 healthcare priority? And then what are the objectives that support those goals? And so you can see that arrow at the bottom um, of that that dark blue diagram, um, we have the current level of measurement is really at this granular bottom up level um, where we're looking at individual measures. What we'd like to do with the cascade is really, again, shift the thinking to the left so that we're thinking more um, of these um, larger categorizations of objectives and goals. Next slide, please. So we've been talking a little bit in abstracts, and I think it's always helpful to give an example. So this is an example of what the um, safety um, healthcare priority looks like for one particular goal and one objective. So we have our healthcare priority in uh, dark green, that's safety. The first goal associated with that healthcare priority is the reduction in national serious safety events. One objective supporting that goal is the reduction in healthcare associated infections. There are other objectives associated with that goal, and there are other goals associated with that healthcare priority we'll see in a minute, but this is just sort of one uh, example of the cascade. So if we drill down further into that objective, we see we have a number of measure families that sort of specify which infections um, contribute um, 
to that uh, reduction in healthcare associated infections objective. So we have CLABC, CAUTI, CDI, uh, surgical site in infection, et cetera. And each one of those can be measured with an individual um, quality measure in the CMS portfolio. So you can kind of see how we're, we're rolling up to that overall healthcare priority of safety. Next slide, please. So with that kind of initial orientation about the motivation and, and goals for the cascade and that general structure of the cascade, that safety example, I'm gonna spend the next few minutes going through the goals and objectives that support each one of those eight priority areas of Meaningful Measures 2.0 to give you a sense of the full framework um, we are not going to dive into the measure family or the individual quality measure level for this conversation. So we're going to keep it at the level of goals and objectives. But um, as we go through this walkthrough, you might start to think about how individual measures that you're familiar with in the CMS portfolio might be categorized or, you know, as Kim said, we're sort of flipping things here. On the flip side, you might start to think about how some of the categories could be measured with quality measures. Next slide, please. So we're going to continue with safety. It's not the first element of the Meaningful Measures 2.0 house, but it's where we're starting um, to sort of build off of the example we just uh, went over together. So there are four goals in the safety priority. Um, they are in dark green on this slide. So they are the reduction in national serious safety events, safety culture, workforce and caregiver safety, and safety for special populations. So um, one thing that will be kind of immediately apparent by this healthcare priority is that it's broader than just patient safety. So we do include uh, the assessment of preventable harms to patients, but we also include in this healthcare priority, the organizational and workforce characteristics that support patient safety and safety for special populations. So when we talk about that um, national serious safety events, we're talking about those um, healthcare associated infections that were in the example, as well as uh, healthcare associated complications and unintended adverse events caused or influenced by the delivery of healthcare that could be prevented uh, by avoiding errors and following accepted care standards. Moving um, to uh, safety culture as a goal, it's really about how healthcare organizations management actions, the norms, the processes and practices connect to individual safety and measures in the um, culture of safety, assess that organizational culture as well as organizational reliability, resilience, and preparedness. When we talk about EHR safety, that refers to the use of health IT to minimize risk and includes the generation and use of accurate, reliable, and timely data. Now moving over to the goals on the right side of the screen, the goal of workforce and caregiver safety is supported by workforce and caregiver resilience, which is characterized by successful adaptation to adversity. And um, I think you'll agree that it's particularly salient in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, workforce and caregiver resilience is fostered by several measurable individual, social and organizational factors. Um, here we're thinking of things like psychosocial support, uh, task mix, um, and working conditions. Optimal staffing as an objective includes things like appropriate certifications and patient staff ratios. Uh, then we also have reduction in burnout and turnover and workplace violence prevention as important measurable objectives to support workforce and caregiver safety. We also have in this healthcare priority safety for special populations. Um, specifically, we have objectives related to safety for mothers, for children, for older adults, individuals with intellectual or developmental disabilities, populations disproportionately affected by poor health outcomes, and individuals receiving home and community based services. Next slide, please. So now we'll move on to the next uh, healthcare priority, 
which is person-centered care, and that has four goals associated with it. We have optimal patient experience, optimal patient engagement, optimal functional outcomes, and optimal home and community-based services. Those are in the darker blue on the left side of the screen. These goals are about how well healthcare services and supports allow people to achieve their desired outcomes. And we include optimal patient experience objectives, such as access to timely care, communication with providers, pain management, price transparency and accuracy, and optimal um, patient experience through the end of stage and end of life care in that category. The goal of optimal patient engagement is based on the principle that care should be delivered with the consideration of the needs, the values, and goals of individuals, caregivers, and their families. So we include the objectives of shared decision making, access to information, and care aligned with goals um, in that objective category. Optimal functional outcomes includes uh, functional status metrics that assess an individual's ability to independently carry out basic activities. So that includes things like ADLs or activities of daily living and IADLs or instrumental activities of daily living. And lastly, this um, healthcare priority area includes assessments of the quality of home and community-based services, which should support um, should support individual preferences, choice and control, and dignity. So you'll note in the objectives column for this last category, we have under development listed here. And you'll see that in a few other places in the framework as we move forward. These are areas where we're still consulting with stakeholders to identify important building blocks of quality. And that is the case for the optimal HCBS goal. We're still developing the objectives associated with it. Uh, next slide, please. So the goals and objectives for this next healthcare priority area are structured a little bit differently because each goal and objective, um, the treatment and management objectives apply to each one of the listed chronic conditions on the right side of the slide. I will say that we are considering refinements in the approach to refining this list of priority chronic conditions. But the idea is that for each of the conditions listed, there is a goal for reduced disease specific mortality, reduced preventable admissions and emergency department utilization, the goal of evidence based healthcare, and the goal of improved disease specific outcomes. Next slide, please. The next healthcare priority is seamless care coordination, which we've identified three goals for. With the goal of inter, optimal interoperability and data availability and reconciliations, we're recognizing that coordination of care for a person in the healthcare system is often supported through transfer of health IT or health information using EHRs, uh, consumer portals, and other technologies as well. So the objectives with this first goal are related to transactions that occur, uh, such as viewing, downloading, and transmittal of information, um, as well as reduced information blocking, which refers to practices that interfere with access, um, interfere with exchange, or the use of health IT. We also include here the use of e-prescribing and automated medication reconciliation. The goal of optimal transitions of care has objectives related to successful handoffs that identify patients at risk for poor transitions and then include comprehensive assessments, care management plans and communication and follow up care. Care coordination goal is built upon a series of activities that ensure that coordinated plans are developed and followed. So when you consider all of the goals uh, and objectives under this priority, uh, the seamless care coordination priority really includes efforts that are leveraging technology as well as, well as other processes and activities to ensure successful transitions of care and coordination. Next slide, please. Equity is another important meaningful measures priority. The goal of equitable care 
uh, has been identified to support the delivery of high quality and timely care for all individuals, including individuals disproportionately affected by social determinants of health for all health episodes in all settings of care. Um, however, what those building blocks of uh, quality for equitable care are and that we should measure are still under consideration and development. The goal of data collection under this healthcare priority is to support the collection of data and stratify analyses by characteristics that can uncover and track care disparities and inequities. Also included in this priority area, we have the goal to identify and mitigate social risk factors, such as food insecurity, housing insecurity, transportation needs, utility needs, interpersonal safety, social isolation, health literacy, and language. Next slide, please. The next healthcare priority is affordability and efficiency. The goals for this healthcare priority area include reduced hospital readmissions, appropriate use of healthcare services, cost, price transparency, and a rebalanced long term services and support system. For the first goal, the objectives for readmissions intend to prioritize better effective use of the healthcare system. Appropriate use of healthcare services. The next goal is supported by objectives related to overuse or underuse of resources and the utilization of appropriate use criteria. This healthcare priority area also includes cost metrics, um, cost metrics by payer, per capita, per episode, as well as the individual's financial burden of care, in addition to uh, the goal and objective of price transparency and accuracy. The rebalancing of long-term supports and services expenditures to ensure an optimal balance between institution institutional care and HCBS is also a goal under this uh, healthcare priority. Next slide, please. So wellness and prevention is a big one. You'll see a lot on this slide. And the intent here is to capture a holistic view of health and well-being across the life course and to include preventive care services that may prevent or enable early detection of disease and reduce the impact of health conditions. So the array of goals you'll see here reflects um, prevention activities, including things like immunizations, cancer prevention, nutrition and physical activity, dental care, contraceptive care, as well as adherence to age and developmentally appropriate guidelines. The last two goals in this priority area on the left, on the right hand side of the screen um, include well-being, which is intended to consider national and community contexts, family resilience and individual life satisfaction and health related quality of life. And then the last goal is uh, public health. And there we're talking about uh, the activities of the public health infrastructure that support community and individual health, such as disease surveillance activities, emergency preparedness, and climate change response. Next slide, please. So finally, we have the behavioral health priority area. And the goals and objectives in this area include uh, suicide prevention, and the screening and treatment of mood disorders such as anxiety and depression, serious mental illness such as bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, as well as dementia. We also have goals and objectives related to uh, use and inappropriate use of alcohol, tobacco, opioids, and other substances that can be associated with significant clinical and functional impairment of effective individuals. We also include here the goal of optimal physical health for individuals with serious mental illness, which is supported by the objective of integrated physical and behavioral health care. So that concludes the tour of the cascade of measures for the eight meaningful measures healthcare priorities. Um, however, just as 
you know, each healthcare priority area of the Cascade has a goal. Um, we do have goals for the Cascade overall, and some of these Kim mentioned up top, but um, I will reiterate on the next slide, please. We really are hoping that the Cascade will help um, prioritize measures in development and in use. So as Kim mentioned up top, we can use it to identify opportunities for measure removal and alignment. And so that would be cases um, where we have multiple measures um, you know, in the same goal or in the same objective, places where there are too many measures. Um, but it's also, um, intended to be used for new measure development. So you may have seen some um, new categories or new uh, goals and objectives that you are aware that we don't currently have uh, quality measures developed. Um, so we'll also be looking for areas where there are no measures or too few measures to really assess the building blocks of quality. As we said, we hope that the cascade of measures will start to shift thinking around the CMS measure portfolio. So for example, can we start thinking about measurement at the goal and objective level um, right off the bat, rather than taking a ground up approach that's focused on individual measures and measure families? So the intention is that achievement of these goals will help reduce the number of measures uh, in CMS programs and support alignment and better reflect priorities overall. Next slide, please. So what's next for the cascade of measures? Uh, well, as Kim mentioned, we did start from examination of the peer reviewed and gray literature to identify the goals and objectives for each healthcare priority. But that's not the end of the story. We have had uh, multiple rounds of stakeholder input to help us refine the framework moving forward. And we're continuing to make those refinements. For example, uh, further fleshing out those objectives that you saw that are currently marked under development. We're also developing uh, definitions for not just the healthcare priority, so not just that top level of analysis, but also other key terms that are used in the cascade. Um, so we're working to, to final, finalize those and really help convey the flavor of what the healthcare priority area is intended to capture. We've actually already taken the step to map um, CMS measures in use to the cascade uh, categories. Um, as a draft, and we'll be asking CMS programs to provide feedback on that draft mapping um, and to begin to leverage the cascade to analyze their portfolio and set priorities. And ultimately, uh, we're intending to record placement of measures in the cascade within the CMS measures inventory tool or CMIT. So that information provided in CMIT would help to locate the measure within the cascade. Next slide, please. So we have a couple of helpful links to resources and references, um, and that includes the Meaningful Measures 2.0 web page, the web page um, that includes the Cascade of Measures framework, as well as the link to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Measure Inventory tool. Um, so we hope that you will peruse those links. And I think we can now open it up for questions and comments.